Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our channel. From this particular video, I'm going to get started with SIEM solution, where SIEM stands for Security Information and Event Management, and it is also commonly pronounced as SIM. From solutions perspective, SIEM solution is one of the most important solution for your security operations center. In fact, majority of the practices that you're going to build will be heavily influenced by the SIEM solution that you are using. When it comes to SOC analyst, they're going to spend majority of their time on SIEM solution console itself. So it's very important for you to make sure that you choose the right solution. And you can only do that once you know how this solution work or what is the purpose of this particular category. Now, even though SIEM stands for security information and event management, however, this keyword is actually a combination of two different aspects related to security. The very first one is security information management, and then you have security event management. So in order for you to understand the purpose of SIEM altogether, it's very important for you to understand first that what is security information management? and what is security event management. And once you know these two aspects, then it will become exceptionally easy for you to understand why there is even a category like SIEM solution. So practically, it all started by managing logs. So in a typical enterprise, you have multiple digital states and for each and every digital states, you will be having some kind of solutions. Let's say for identity, you have Active Directory. For network, you have, let's say, hardware devices, routers, switches, or firewalls, or proxies. And then application can be any software or solution that's been used in your enterprise. From infrastructure perspective, you can have multiple cloud providers or your on-prem data center. From data standpoint, you have on-prem file servers, Microsoft OneDrive, Google Drive. From endpoint perspective, you have MDM solutions. Now, all these solutions or all these examples that I have given, they will generate some logs and some of the logs generated by these solutions will be helpful from security standpoint. Now, apart from having the native or default solution for all these digital states, you will also have typical security solutions for each and every digital state. Now, what do I mean by this? That let's say for identity, you have Active Directory. However, from identity security standpoint, you have Microsoft Defender for identity, or let's say CrowdStrike's identity protection solution. Similarly for network, you even though you have proxy, but then there is a specific solution which performs IPS and IDS. For application, you have CASB. For infrastructure, you have CSPM or CWP solutions. For data, you have DLP solution. For endpoint, you have EPP, AV, EDR, and this list just goes on. Practically speaking, in a typical enterprise, there will be around at least 15 different solutions that will be used, okay? Now, let me just give you a small brief introduction in terms of what kind of logs can be generated for each digital state. So let's say if I talk about identity or let's say if I talk about any solution which is responsible for identities, let's take an example of AD itself, then there will be logs related to user account creation, which is identity creation, group creation, role creation, privilege provisioning, sign-in attempts, deprovisioning of identities. Similarly, for network, you have creation of VLAN, creation of a specific route on a router, let's say, creation of wireless network, access request, defining tiering model for external connectivity. From application standpoint, you have logs uh, which let you know about provisioning of user profile, performing app level authorization, enablement of specific capabilities, or let's say code changes. Similarly, for infrastructure, you have DNS server logs, DHCP server logs, file server logs, cloud activity logs, resource provisioning logs, for data, you have file creation, data classification, data protection, data sharing, data encryption. And lastly, from endpoint perspective, you have device onboarding logs, device compliance, configuration logs, registry logs, application installation logs, command line logs, and changes to a specific file events altogether. Now, think about it. As of now, I have only discussed about the kind of logs that can be generated from a specific solution for a specific digital state. 
And just to reiterate, this is not a list. This is just an example to make you all understand the context. Now, if I talk about all these logs, which are generated by different digital states, or let's say solutions of different digital states, they can provide you some security context. And not only about these solution, as I've stated before, for every digital state, you will have some security solutions as well. So let's say identity protection solution is generating identity alert. Similarly, you have endpoint alert, alerts for network, alert for data activities, application security, infrastructure, cloud environments, and whatnot. Now imagine a scenario where you want to ingest logs from all these different sources into a centralized repository. Okay. Now you will be very intentional when it comes to capturing data. That means you will decide that what is the purpose of a specific log type that I'm collecting from identity solution. Okay. Now you have to be very, very specific and I don't want you to miss this. You have to be exceptionally intentional when it comes to capturing data. Okay. So this process of capturing all the required data that can help you with some security context into a centralized repository is called security information management. Now, as I've stated before that in an ideal scenario, you will not be ingesting all the logs from all the solution. Let me give you an example. Whenever there is a bad password attempt, let's say for a specific user account, then Active Directory generates an event with a specific event ID. Now, you may want to capture these logs to detect brute force attempt. But when it comes to identity protection solution, you may want to ingest all the alerts, be it low, medium, high or critical or whatever it is. Okay. So when it comes to data ingestion, there has to be an effective planning done and then you should proceed further. Now, in our context, we will be exceptionally focused towards security part itself because that is where we are heading. But with this being said, the data which is available by these solutions, typical solutions, they help you with data enrichment. Now, there is a dedicated video that I have created for data enrichment as well. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and watch that video as well. Okay. Now the question is that once I have captured everything, okay, what's next? So once you have collected all the data, then you will go ahead and create rules or conditions to detect anomaly. Once any anomaly is detected, you will perform deep search. That means you should interact with the data that you have captured. You should be able to write queries. You should be able to query data, right? Then if let's say you have performed deep search and there is a process that has to be followed in terms of responding, then you should go ahead and follow that process. Basically, you should define a process for responding to alerts and incidents. And lastly, initiate the recovery process. Now, this step-by-step -step kind of activities which will be performed, this is called a security event management. That means how you should behave or what should be done if there is any security event now if you guys closely look at these keywords that i mentioned over here these are also mentioned in nist cybersecurity framework as functions right now you may not be able to find investigate in nist if i talk about default functions because think about it that cybersecurity framework is a reference to begin with and you can change it according to yourself okay so now let's say if there is a specific solution that offers you both the capabilities security event management as well as security information management then that particular solution can be classified as a seam solution and this is what it is end to end so the very first aspect is to make sure that you correct the right set of information and that's why you are doing security information management now once that data is collected then what are your next steps? How effectively you can derive some meaning out of that data? How effectively you can write proactive rules that can let you know about anomalies if detected in any of these solutions? And all this is possible because you have all the logs in a centralized repository and the same solution is also giving you a console to manage alerts or incidents. So this was all about knowing what is a SIEM solution 
where I have talked about what is the purpose of security information management and security event management and lastly combining both these aspects into security information and event management. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how exactly data is processed in a SIEM solution. So if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.